Welcome to session one. My name is Arnold and I will be your instructor. Chatbots are really computer programs that can converse with people. When I say converse, it could be text, it could be images, it could be emojis, it could be even buttons or widgets that people can interact with. But the idea is that you're having a conversation. So this is what a chatbot really looks like. If someone asks, what is your name? The first thing that happens is that the bot tries to figure out what's being said. And once it is understood what's being said, then it has to try and formulate a response. To do that, it needs to extract experience or perhaps past answers in order for it to come up with a response. In our chatbots, when the user asks, what is your name? The first thing that happens is that that question is matched against a template rule, which is represented by the Q. This in turn triggers a response. And the response can extract information from models. A model can be something about the real world or about the past or about the bot's experience that you have put in. And after that, it comes up with a response. Now, it's obviously very hard for you to create chatbots which can answer any topic. So, in this competition, we want to focus on a special kind of topic called a micro topic, which is a very tiny piece about the world that we can still talk about. So examples could be your family, uh, Singapore, the country you come from, uh, swimming or some activity that you like. So all of these things are potential micro topics. I'd like you to see chatbots as a collection of micro topics. So even a small topic, let's say uh, about swimming, can be broken down further into smaller topics. So the chatbot then is a collection of those micro topics. There are two kinds of chatbots. Stateless chatbots cannot remember the past. This is what you normally see when you interact with many of the digital assistants on your handphones or on your computers. Stateful chatbots, on the other hand, can remember the past. In this series of lessons, I will first show you how to create stateless chatbots because they're the easiest to create. Stateful chatbots we will tackle in sessions five and six. Now chatbots can be applied in many areas, in, in entertainment, in sports information, for example, uh, product discovery, if you want to find a new book or a new restaurant, uh, re food recommendations, and of course, lifestyle and advice. In session one, we will continue with launching our first chatbot. In session two, we'll talk about types, things, and templates, which are the basic building blocks of your chatbot. We'll go on to discuss references and guards, which are needed for realistic templates. In session four, we'll talk about logging and debugging, which is very important for you to solve problems with your chatbot. In sessions five and session six, we'll talk about various techniques that you can use to represent the real world and also to introduce statefulness into your chatbot. And now I'd like to introduce you to AutoCAF. In this demo, I will show you how to use the AutoCAF platform. Open your web browser and log into autocaf.io. You should see a gray key button on the top right. Click on it and enter your username and password. AutoCAF should respond with a small welcome message with your username. Next, click on Labs. This opens up a new tab. You should see a series of online labs. Click on Build a Bot 2020. This opens up a pop-up window. In this window, click on the green download button. It should say download complete if it's all okay. Next, go back to the first AutoCAF tab. Click on File Explorer. This will display all the files you have available you should see the BB2020 folder in blue. Clicking on it opens up its contents. Click on main.m to open it up. 
This file is where you test and launch your bots. You should see two buttons, Test and Publish. Test runs the test user questions. You can see that I have three test questions here. Click on Test. Next, once you're happy with your bot and how it responds to the test questions, launch it using Publish. This publishes your bot into the Smojo Cloud. To access this bot, use a new tab with the URL app.smojo.org, followed by your username and your bot name. You should see your bot appear, and you can start interacting with your bot. This ends the demo. What I'd like you to do now is to open up the lab instructions. Go back to the first tab, click on File Explorer again, and click on Lab Instructions. Read through the notes for session one and attempt to answer the exercises for session one. <laughs>